Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So today we're going to go over some exercises that we can do um, from the bed. So uh, later on, you'll be seeing some videos from me that I will might be laboring, labeling as mat exercises. Um, and I did talk to a few of you before um, I decided to record those to see some interest. And some of your concerns were that you just didn't know if you could get on and off the floor by yourself. And I'm here to tell you, me either, um, definitely a skill I'm working on. Not easy to get on and off the floor by yourself when you don't have full mobility of your legs. So what I would love to do in this video today is show you some of the exercises we'll be running through and show you that you can, you are more than welcome to do them in your bed or whatever surface is easiest for you. That way you can just pop on over to your bed. Um, you can also do these exercises when you're waking up or going to sleep. Um, so we're going to start in our bed. We're going to start with both of our legs long today, sitting up straight, uh, facilitating a straight spine. I'm just going to turn to the side a bit for you. And, um, what I really want us to focus on is that we're always facilitating our straight spine. Even when we're doing, um, you know, these mat postures, these bed postures, what we're doing when we're facilitating a straight spine, there's a few things here. We're rolling our shoulder blades down and back. We are pulling our belly button into our spine. We're engaging our abdomen. We can actively feel, and if we can't, maybe we can imagine what that would feel like, our abs trying to hold us here. We're trying to create a long line of energy from our tailbone all the way through the crown of our head. And we're trying to create space between each one of those vertebrae. So that's what we're trying to do to start out. Now, the reason that we are going to go through some hip stretches is because we're sitting all day. Stretching our, out our hips is extremely important, especially because one of the muscles that um, contributes to our hips is our psoas, which um, connects our lower lumbar or our lumbar um, region of our spine to our femur. So if we're sitting all day, that muscle is constantly compressed. It's going to be tight. We need to make sure we're stretching it out. Additionally, a tight psoas can um, cause back pain, pelvis pain. Um, it can cause our back to be too curved where our, maybe our belly is dropping out because our, back, our spine is so curved. Um, and that could all be results of a tight psoas. So we're going to try to work on some poses that will stretch that out today and others that will just give us some relief in our hip flexors. So for now, we're going to start out facilitating our straight spine, sitting up tall, and then slowly, one hand at a time, we're going to walk our hands out. What I want you to be careful for as we're doing these leg stretches, they are a little bit more intense than some of the chair stretches that we've been doing. Um, please be careful for autonomic dysreflexia. Please notice signs of your body saying, I'm uncomfortable, I'm in pain. Um, autonomic dysreflexia is not always a bad thing, but it can be life-threatening. So some signs of that. This is your body telling you that it's uncomfortable when you can't feel it. For example, if you can't feel these stretches, uh, would be sweating, goosebumps, uh, is your heart rate elevating, things like that. So please be aware of those. Please, please just err on the side of caution while we're stretching out our legs. I don't want us pulling any muscles, which is very easy to do, especially if we can't feel. So err on the side of caution. Don't overstretch. Um, stay within the means of what you're comfortable with. And then maybe as you get more into this, you can stretch a little bit further over time. Okay, so just slowly walking your hands out. If we can make it all the way down to our feet, again, still facilitating that straight spine, I'm using my feet to anchor in and pull me straight. And then I'm also working to pull my tailbone down into the bed. So I know that's kind of difficult to think about. And the first time a yoga teacher ever asked me to do this, I thought, what does this mean? I wish I could give you guys adjustments the same way she did to me, but what she did is placed her hand on the small of my back and she just gently pushed down. And I thought, okay, I get it, I get it. So if you could imagine me placing my hand on the small of your back and pulling down, that's kind of the intention and motion that I want you to be doing with your tailbone, pulling it toward the bed, okay? And then with our head, long line of energy, coming out of the top of our head, creating space between each of those vertebrae. 
And then again, here we are still facilitating our 90 degree angle with our ankles. Um, we want to make sure we practice good ankle mobility. And then what I'm doing with my elbows is holding my legs straight in. So I'm kind of bracing with my arms on my legs right now. I am noticing a little bit of autonomic dysreflexia, but I know that I can bend all the way forward. Um, I've been doing it for quite some time now, even pre-injury. Um, so I know that this is just my body saying, you know, we're stretching right now, we're uncomfortable. So stretching is outside of the body's comfort zone because we're pushing it past that limit where it says, I'm tight. We're trying to make it looser. So we need to hold these stretches for a while. Holding the stretches from 45 to 90 seconds would be a good goal to aim for. From at around 45 seconds, you're maintaining your flexibility. Above 60 to 90 seconds, um, you are increasing your flexibility. Now, you're only going to be able to increase your flexibility so much, but you can definitely still work on increasing your flexibility. When I graduated high school, I couldn't touch my toes. And look at me now. Here I am. So on our inhale, we're going to push back up, being very careful. We were just folded forward. We want to watch our blood pressure, and we're just going to slowly walk our hands back. Again, still facilitating that straight spine. The next posture that we're going to take, we're going to bring both of our legs in. So I'm going to bring one leg in. I am stabilizing with this hand, um, letting it fall open, stabilizing with the hand of my open leg. I am pulling my other leg in and then the flats of my feet are coming together now this is going to be an intense hip stretch so i want you to protect yourself if you need to bring your feet out farther if your hips are extremely tight you may need to bring your your feet out farther that's perfectly okay if you can work them in a little bit more go ahead and do that but make sure that you're being safe on your knees um, about right here is where I start feeling knee tightness too. So this is a stretch on our knees. It's going to be a stretch on our hips as well. We want to make sure we're protecting everything, but we're still pushing that body past that space of, it can stretch a little bit further. So inhale, we're going to facilitate straight spine, sitting up tall. And then what we're going to do is bring our hands around our feet as if they, our feet were a book. So what I'm doing is I'm bringing my thumbs together. They're going on the insides, the bottoms of my feet. And then my hands are wrapping around the outside. And then we're sitting tall again, bracing my wrists on my ankles right now to pull me tall. And just breathing here for a second. It's hard to breathe um, sometimes when you're stretching because your body is uncomfortable. So what we're doing by taking deep breaths is telling the body that it's relaxed, that it can relax, that it can just, it's okay. Sometimes when I'm having spasms, I just start breathing very deeply and my body relaxes. It's amazing the ability you have to calm yourself down if you can focus on your breath. So we're just breathing here, long, gentle breaths. And rolling our shoulders down and back our spine. And then we're ready, we can go ahead and collapse back, releasing our hands. The next thing that we're gonna do to bring a little bit of movement to ourselves is gonna be our cat-cow. We're gonna stay in this posture with our hips open. And we're gonna just bring a little bit of movement to our hips by bringing that rotation of the cat-cow. We're gonna do an active cat-cow matching our breath to our movement. I'll show you what I mean in just one second. And then that'll give us a little bit of movement in our hips. Maybe that we don't get every day because we're sitting. So again, this time I'm just placing both my hands flat on the outsides of my feet. I'm gonna pull myself through, sitting up straight. And actually, I'm gonna give myself a little bit more room. I'm scooting my feet forward a little bit more so I have more room to pull my body through. I'll show it to me what I mean. I'm pulling my body, my chest through my biceps. I'm dropping my belly 
down into my lap, into this space I'm creating here. I'm dropping my belly down. We're still sitting straight. We're facilitating that straight spine. Really inhale here, dropping that belly again, rolling the shoulder blades down and back. This is our cow position. And then going into our cat, we're gonna exhale, rounding out the spine, pushing through the palms, pulling the belly button into the spine. Gaze is looking to the circle that our legs, is, legs are creating here. And then inhale again, pulling the chest through the biceps, dropping the belly into the circle our legs are creating. Gaze is looking out. Exhale, bringing the belly button into the spine, creating a C-shape with the, the spine, pulling the vertebrae apart, pushing through the palms. Gaze is looking down into our lap. Inhale, guiding the chest through the arms, through the biceps, dropping the belly down. And exhale, rounding out the spine, coming to that C-shape position, gaze looking into our lap. And just matching your breath to your movement now, taking these at your own pace. And now if we're ever going through a class and your breath doesn't match my breath and my movement, that's perfectly okay. None of us have the same rhythm of breathing. That's okay that yours doesn't match mine. I always want you to be connecting your breath to your movement, not connecting your breath to my movement and my breath. Um, your breath. Your body needs the, the oxygen that you're sending it. Your muscles need that. So I want you to make sure that you're breathing on your time, especially when we're focusing on active breathing, okay? Just trying to take these slowly here, really pulling those vertebrae apart when we push through our palms. And then inhale, really guiding that chest through the shoulders and the biceps. Then exhale, pushing through, pulling that belly button into the spine. Inhale, coming forward. Good job. And when you're ready, just coming back to seated. Now we're just gonna extend one of our legs long, keeping the other one bent. We can either bring the flat of our foot to the inside of our calf. We can bring the flat of our foot to the inside of our thigh but we're never gonna bring the flat of our foot to our knee. That's, that's dangerous, we wanna protect our joints. So I'm gonna bring mine down to my calf for now. I'm gonna, again, facilitate a straight spine. This opposite knee is still bent. And then I'm slowly, again, gonna walk my hands forward like we did for the beginning stretch with both of our hand, feet together. And then what I'm going to do is, again, facilitate that 90 degree angle here. So we're just taking um, a bent leg stretch here, opening up this hip, getting a good stretch through the hamstring of our extended leg. Just breathing. Maybe inhale, growing a little bit longer and taller from our tailbone all the way through the crown of our head. And then on our next exhale, slowly beginning to sit back up. When we're ready, we're gonna just switch out those legs. So I'm gonna extend my opposite leg long this time, bringing my once straight leg now bent again, bringing the flat of that foot to the inside of your calf or to the inside of your thigh, not bringing it to the inside of your knee, that's dangerous, we wanna protect our knee joint. Again, sitting up straight, facilitating my straight spine before I start, and then slowly, slowly walking my hands forward until I feel a stopping point. Maybe right here is good for me, maybe all the way down is good for me, do what's best for you. And then again, if we can facilitate this 45 degree angle with our ankle. 
And this is just gonna give us a more intense stretch. Again, we're definitely getting a hamstring stretch when we have the 45 degree, or I'm sorry, this is a 90 degree angle. This 90 degree angle with our ankle. If you can't reach your ankle and maybe you wanna facilitate this as well, next time we're doing these or next time you're running through this video, maybe grab a dish towel, um, a belt, something to help you pull against it even if, you're, even if you were here and you were pulling against it. Um, maybe a strap and just holding and breathing here so again when we're going through stretches we want to make sure that we're holding them for at least 45 seconds 45 to 90 seconds would be a great goal to aim for again breathing here and when you're ready on your next exhale slowly sitting up beautiful job extending your leg long well that was our class for today I just wanted to run through some of the stretches that we might be doing in a mat class um, mat class, uh, maybe I will amend this to say mat class, bed class, uh, surface class, just so that you are aware that these can be wherever you can sit with your legs long in long sitting position. That's perfect. You don't have to get on the floor just because I'm on the floor. Uh, do what works for you. Do what works for you in your environment and feel successful. I hope you guys enjoyed this video today and those few stretches, and I hope you enjoy running through those. Let me know your feedback in the comments, and also subscribe if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, and like my Facebook page. Thanks so much, you guys. This has been Adaptive Yoga with Molly. Have a great day.